Alrighty guys, so we made it to the Clusa Heritage Trail. Sorry for the wind, it is quite windy today as a cold front's coming through, but what better day to get out on it. So a cool thing about here is Pine Island is where the, the Clusa Indians came and they cleared out a lot of mangroves and they built up, built up towns and homes and, and things of the sort like that. So we have a lot of things called Clusa, Clusa Middle, Clusa High, Rhodes Clusa, things like that. But here they actually saved a lot of where they were and they built up a research site and they did a lot of research and as we walk through here we're gonna see it dating all the way back to 100 AD that's insane so here we're walking up to the top of Brown Mounding shells and they said that in some cases you can find old fish bones because it was a mainly fishing town. Now it hasn't really changed until recently. When I was a kid living here it was mostly um, a fishing town. We had huge like well we had huge well known fishermen you'd go out they would catch the shrimp and all that and then bring it back and join the, the guided tour, but you guys know I like to do my own thing, so they do have guided tours that you can be a part of here, and they do have a lot better job explaining the history than I do since that's their whole purpose, but I enjoy being able to stop, take the time, I don't know, be on anyone's agenda but my own, and plus talk to the camera, so with that being said, let's head on down from the brown mound and kind of dive into this. I love being able to submerge myself into the history of, of, of things, but... that we're standing on right now were actually a lot taller than what they used to be. They actually would shave off a lot of them to fill in for roads and canals. So like the mound we're on now used to be 30 feet higher than what it was, which is insane. But they were using these the dirt to build roads and houses and, and things like that sort of that such I don't know. But the Calusa also were the ones that dug a lot of the canals in through like Cape Coral and, and things like that too. So they can get their boats through to go fishing because they lived on a very rich fishing diet. On top of which they were really big into art which kind of also ties into Pine Island with where it's changed with the art and such. But now I'm sure you peeked this back here. It is a, such a low tide right now. Check this out. You could 
actually walk out on there. It's such low tide. I was going to go kayaking today, but I didn't because it's quite windy and a little bit chilly out today. And being on the water is going to be even worse. So I decided to come out here and take a hike through. But the chill and the wind isn't going to stop me. Because right now this is beautiful. This is probably the most beautiful park or trail we've been at to date. So let's keep diving in and see how far back in history we can really go. Now the lady at the gift shop said that the osprey are actually nesting right now. So we have a good chance of seeing quite a few ospreys either in the nest or flying around. Now earlier I saw one kind of, because like I said it's windy out so it was like floating down through with the wind. I wish I was recording because it was a sight to see. It was so cool. Birds, the way like bigger birds in my opinion, like eagles, osprey, hawks, the way they fly is just so mesmerizing. I love it. It's like majestic almost. pictures on these stands with the information is actually been through years of research and the lady said uh, it's in partner with the University of Florida so UF they're archaeologists so they've come out and they've done like digs and they've done a plenty of research so now they work with an artist to design all that so you as you're walking through you can kind of see what it would be like back in the day which it's kind of really submersive. Remember a couple weeks ago when we were talking about the Jeep Trail? I can imagine, because I've seen so many World War II movies, what it would be like riding along a Jeep Trail and training. So now, while I never really watch a lot of Native American movies, with these pictures, I can put myself back to where it was, you know, kind of live it off the land, which I think would be amazing to do. I don't know if I could do it for like my whole life, but maybe a couple of days, especially when go out camping and things like that instead of bringing in food you cook clean and or you catch clean and cook so it is amazing out here and hopefully the wind's not too bad in the, the microphone but we're just gonna keep going in and see what we can see now it's, like I said it's supposed to go all the way back to 100 AD they said that there's been people here for 2,000 years but fishing here for even longer Nothing beats kind of the history like that. So the trail here is actually a little over a mile. I think she said one mile and like 700 feet. We kind of do two loops around. One of the bigger loops, which is where I'm now. And then you go across the little bridge and you do a smaller loop. Now the way it's laid out, there's signs everywhere. You can't get lost. It shows you and tells you kind of where everywhere you can go. You can pick up a little map. And on that map, it has a bunch of different like trees that you're seeing around too or you can of course just check out the, the map at the beginning of the hike and just use that on your way way through but I took the took the map the lady so generally offered me you put it back when you get done so we kind of kind of use that as a guide make sure we're on the correct path So we're actually getting ready to hit onto their barrel grounds. Um, and they were talking about how they would carry, the, they would have these wooden masks along the walls, and there would be, it would be a belief that as the women sang, spirits would come back. But then there was an also thing where people would impersonate spirits and wear them. I just missed this gang for you guys, but um, now if you remember quite a few months back when we were walking Lover's Key and we talked about Ponce de Leon and the Spanish uh, conquistadors. Now they fought the Calusa Indians for 150 years before the Calusa Indians kind of gave up to their demise. I don't know how you would want to call it. But, so we're getting ready to enter the burial ground. 
I don't know what we're gonna see, what it's gonna be like, but I might just show, shoot some B-roll so I'm not disturbing the sacred area. behind me is actually one of the burial grounds we just read about it but they actually said that they would bury them lay on their side with pieces of like broken pottery or half shells and then take the dirt and then put it back so they take like this dirt and then bury it with it with the person and then in 1710 so 1710 the Calusa abandoned Pineland so, as we know it today as Pine Island. But in the 1700s, this mound reached its highest size. And as we read a little bit earlier, um, there was excavations that kind of ruined a lot of things. So, in 1990 and 1992, in those two years, archaeologists came through, fixed a lot of the holes, dug little excavations to find out more information, repaired those as well and that's what we have today and you know it goes on and says that the south florida indians actually brought in like offerings to the dead because they were they were uneasy about it so we're now we're about 1000 AD now we're supposed to go about 900 more years before that and kind of keep diving in and I was interrupted midway through with two woodpeckers. All I heard was tap, 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 tap. And I was like, what is that? And I turned around and I was like, oh wow, it's a, it's a dead tree. You know, we find a lot of bats in there or woodpeckers like to peck it out for the termites and, and things like that. And I glanced up and I saw two woodpeckers. So that was a cool sight to see. Kind of annoying with the, the constant pecking, but it is what it is. small mound. Now small mound, unlike the burial ground mound, or the smith mound, is where they took care of all their, their seashells and fish bones and all the plants that they would burn or discard like so that outside of like a corn husk type thing. It would go there and it would just they would just build it up. They added in broken pottery. Anything that was kind of discarded was left here in small mound. Now, 
when they did the excavation in 1992, they found out that they actually ate 23 different types of fish or seashell here. It also shows that the land actually went a little bit further east off the coast, but due to the melting glaciers and all that, the coastline actually came up as the Clusa moved inland. So, now unfortunately we're dealing with that now with the fast, fast change in the global warming for fossil fuels and all that. We're not going to get into that today, but so that was a small mound. We're going to hike back around and finish up this loop and kind of stop it along all the different historical sites. You know, like I said earlier in the video, I always knew Hanan was a fishing town. I grew up when it was a fishing town. We got a lot of fresh fish uh, due to my great-grandfather knowing a lot of people. So he'd actually bring us a lot of fish. We'd have smoked mullet and shrimp and things like that. Snoke, mullet, whatever. Um, so I always knew it was a fishing town, but I never realized that how far back the fishing town went, which I mean, it makes sense because it is an island. But with that being said, to watch it go from a fishing town, kind of like an art town, and still have it reflecting the history, I think it's an actually really cool uh, change. But it also kind of continues to tie into its historical beginnings, which is amazing at my point, like in my opinion. So as you're walking through, there's loads of these benches. Let's see if I can get a shot. Loads of these benches, so you can sit down and relax and observe through there and kind of think about where this hike is kind of taking you back in time and just to enjoy the pure beauty. I think this is one of the most beautiful hikes we've been on. A lot of them, in my opinion, feels like the same environment constantly. You know, we had the Pine Flatlands and the Pine Flatlands. But walking through here, I don't know if it's the wood chips we're walking on, the all the brush nearby, the trees. I don't know what it is to make it kind of feel different, but it's, in my opinion, it's one of the best hikes we've gone on, not just as a content historical view, but the surroundings is just beautiful. So, I wish I could just disappear and kind of be around out here for a couple of hours, but one, I didn't bring no re reading material to kind of enjoy the quietness. And two, I have things to do a little bit later on. Maybe I'll plan it a better next time, but it is what it is. It's my day off. I tend to pack a lot of things my day off. But enough of that adult nonsense. land in the 1700s it did no one really lived there so to speak but the Seminoles from Georgia came down and then the Cubans from Cuba came up and they would catch a lot of our fish salt it dry it and then ship it back to Cuba and now when Spain took over so they ceded Florida they actually pushed the Cubans and the Seminoles out and they were no longer welcomed it was about 1821 Alrighty guys, as we head towards the end of this trail, what a crazy historical walk this was. I learned so much between how life on Pine Island now isn't that different from what it was in 100 AD. And as we already knew, the Spaniards kind of chased the Clusa away and all those battles. But I didn't know that the Seminoles pushed down all the way from Georgia. So there's a lot of different things about the Seminoles over on the other coast, a little north of here. But, wow, what a day. I didn't, I didn't know a lot of these mounds 
that I saw through Pine Island when I was a kid were actually bare, well, not really burial grounds, but leftover seashells and things like that. And what's crazy is when I was a kid, my parents always talked about how Pine Island dirt grew things better than anywhere else. Now, I wonder if that's because of all the history there. Maybe it's just, maybe it's the dirt itself. I'm sure it's some, it's some scientific thing, but if you guys enjoyed this wonderful hike on this beautiful day, be sure to leave a like. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, ring the, de the bell so you're notified every time I post a video, and as you know, hikes go live every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, let me know your favorite part or something that you found most interesting.